I'm going to determine what the center point is of this hydraulic lifters plunger travel. That way we can figure out how many turns we need to go with the adjuster nut on the rocker arm if we need to go a half a turn, three quarters, or one full turn to get the plunger in the center of its travel. First thing I'm gonna do is I've got this indicator and I've got this point here out of my little kit. So what I can do is put that point right down in the, on the edge of the plunger. Then I can zero my indicator. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the lifter apart. To take it apart, I've gotta pull this clip out. Now I'm not gonna use this lifter again. It's one of the old lifters. And then this would be the plunger cap. It's where the push rod goes. The metering valve. Plunger itself. The check valve seat and the check valve are in here. And that's the retainer that moves inside there. And that's what does the pumping. And then the plunger return spring, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this spring out. And I'm going to put this back in. So I washed it out really good with lacquer thinner. That's what it looks like down inside the hydraulic lifter. Next, I'm going to take the plunger and push it down in there till I get all the air out. It's the right tool for the job. And then put the plunge cap in. Okay, so it's in there and it's solid. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my comparator stand, lift up on my indicator. And I knew I had it, I had about 200 thousandths of travel because it was on the number two over here. I started off here. So I'm 100 and let's just call that 150, 150 thousandths travel on that plunger. So that means I've got 75 thousandths to the center of where the plunger is going to end up. So here's all the parts of this hydraulic lifter. This is part number ELGHL-1817. It's a hydraulic lifter for a Chevy V8. Of course, that's the lifter body itself. And here's the snap ring you take out first, obviously. Plunger cap, the metering valve that goes on the plunger cap, the plunger itself, the check valve, the spring, and the retainer right here, and then the plunger return spring. So what I'm gonna do, since I've got this all cleaned out, I'm gonna put this back in, put this uh, plunger cap back on, and then I'm gonna put it over here to comparator stand and I'm gonna push it down and see how much I have. Try to do this a little bit tricky. Okay, so this is gonna tell me how much travel I have with this lifter. So I started out at right here is where I started at. So I got 100, and 50 thousandths travel. So 75 thousandths will put me right in dead center. Let's go to the engine and determine how much of an adjuster nut turn 75 thousandths will be to put the plunger right in the center. All right, so I just quickly put an indicator on here and now I'm gonna turn the nut. So I've got it zeroed. I'll turn this rocker nut a quarter turn. See how much it changes. So it moved it 30 thousandths. I went another quarter turn, ended up with 50 thousandths, and then another quarter turn ended up with about 70. So one full turn, I ended up with 85 thousandths. That tells me that three quarters of a turn would put me right in the center of the plunger to travel. So as I showed you earlier, here's a hydraulic lifter and all its parts with the spring. Here's a solid lifter. It looks the same on the outside, but on the inside, all you have is a piddle valve and a cup. And this is basically, this was out of a NASCAR engine. So this is hardened and a snap ring. And that's it. So you can't get much more solid than that. The valve goes in. And then the cup. And you put the snap ring in. It goes down in there, believe it or not. The snap ring goes in and it's solid. That's why it's called a solid lifter. Now here's one off of a 1947 Buick. It's just a, basically a tap it. But there's nothing, it's just hollow down inside. You got that hole, the oil hole on the side, 1947. And then this was a NASCAR engine. Like I said, it feeds oil through this hole and then up through the push rod. And this one does the same thing, but the lifter pumps up. It varies depending on oil pressure. It pumps oil in here and then basically makes for a quieter valve train. When you don't have to have it in a race engine, it doesn't matter if it's quiet. It's more precise. The lift's gonna be there. You're gonna have more power. And here's a roller lifter whenever you hear I'm talking about a roller cam. But I've got this piece on here because I used it for 
as a tool to check, put an indicator on here to check the lift of a cam, but that's a roller lifter. And it's, it's solid, but it's got the roller. And of course it takes a special cam, it's called a roller cam for that. That's also out of an NASCAR engine.